I didn't read what that said. The student continues to browse the web on his phone despite losing his head. Oh my god. I've killed him. <laughs> or not. Well, hey, all you cool creatures. I'm Cryptid. Welcome to the Cryptid Plays YouTube channel. And today we are playing Hello, Charlotte. Episode 2. I've been really wanting to get back to these games. There's only one more after this. But in general, I've been wanting to get back to weird RPG Maker horror games and weird horror games in general. But RPG Maker ones just sit well with me. Now, as you know, these games are pretty surreal, but there are a lot of content warnings that I have for all of you, which include... Body horror, gore, blood, injury, bullying, suicidal ideation, suicide, murder. If you're not in a mental place to watch those sorts of things, I recommend turning away. But if you are willing to watch those sorts of things, viewer discretion is advised. And with that out of the way, let us continue Charlotte's journey of... Getting up, going to school, and coming back home to go to sleep. Inside a dream, I laugh. And the world laughs with me. Inside a dream, I forget. And the world forgets with me. Inside a dream, I am the world. Hello, world. Hello, Charlotte. Etherain presents Hello, Charlotte, Episode 2 Requiem Eternum Deo. As the seasons die one by one, the slumbering god's heavy eyelids open once again. A choir of voices in a fog-filled box of a mind. I must be dreaming. Since the oracle became a part of me, my dreams always take place in here. A pitch-black land where time does not exist. For these three years... I've slept next to them in deafening silence. This time, it's different. The Oracle is awake. Oh my gosh, that's... That's, um, hmm, horrifying. Good morning, Seth. Today, we will get up, go to school, and go back to sleep again. Please take care of me. Day one. <coughs> Whoa, there's some voice acting here. Is it morning already? Hey, Charlotte, are you okay? You have black coming out of your mouth? Meow. That's right, we have the mad cat. Meow. I feel a paw poke my face. Just a few more minutes. Meow. It sounded almost reprimanding. Mad Cat nuzzles against my cheek. Right, you must be hungry. Just wait a bit. <coughs> uh, I look at my hand. It's covered in something dark. Oh, so she didn't realize it. It's not blood. Weird. Meow. It's nothing. Don't worry. Umbrella Man was right. 
Over these years, my health really did become worse. We still have a bit of time before school, Seth. Let's feed Mag Cat and greet everyone on our way. New task. Feed Mag Cat. And greet everyone. And go to school. The kingdom of God is within you. There's a drawing inside. Look at it. No, <laughs> we have friends. It's a drawing of me and Anri. Who is this? Seth, don't tell me you don't remember. It's my friend, Henrietta. She always tells me to call her Anri, though. She drew this picture for my birthday. So nice of her, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The Data Omnicube. Do not turn off the screens. Do not disturb the neighbors. Do not speak of house tenants. Doors. Be polite to the doors with a puppeteer symbol. Bring elevator doors a cool sticker. Only users with X in their names have access to doors with a puppeteer symbol. Omnicubes. Omnicubes, short for omnipotent cubes, are multitask devices that allow the transportation, duplication, creation, or disintegration of organic matter and the storage of data. Please do not put liquid soap inside Omnicubes as it may result in unforeseen consequences. Tenants. List of registered first floor tenants. Charlotte Wiltshire, Felix Honecker, Henry Huxley, Bennett, Aiden, Magcat. All right. Teleport Omnicube. That's right, we can teleport. A toilet. The toilet paper smells like apple pie. It's almost scary how far humanity has progressed with inventions. There's only a monthly supply of liquid soap inside. Take some. Yeah. Acquired soap bottle. It's blueberry flavored. Not scented. By the way, I'm not able to really turn down the sound, so I'll try to edit it down, but... Hmm. There's an acidic smell coming from the plastic bag in the bathtub. It's better not to touch it. Indeed. Don't touch acidic bags. TV room. All right. <laughs> We're going to start doing the narration in her voice unless Seth speaks. I often remember my journey to the TV world. This channel isn't working. Watch TV? Just for a bit. Just a quick look then. We have to hurry. Today on Panopticon TV, truth about eco food revealed. Who would have known the green labels were put on packages only to raise their price? Watch us at 7 p.m. to find out more.
Let's go. Shh goes the static noise. Bennett's favorite show is supposed to be running soon. Felix, your lab. Oh my god. He looks adorable. He was adorable in the first game too. Whoa, what's with wait, what what voice did I give him? It's been a few months. Whoa, what's with that face? You look awful. Complimenting me this early in the morning. Shh, whatever. So cold. By the way, wasn't there a kitchen before? Must be the house's structure changing again. Try the second door on the right. Sure, thanks. Whatever you say, Felix. One flew over the coal's nest. Simulacres et simulation. Flatland. I know one of them is one flew over the cuckoo's nest, but the other ones, I don't know. The snake who ate its tail. Player synthesizer. Ouroboros is the snake that ate its tail. Second door on the right. Aha. A meaty smell is coming from the oven. Aiden says that he burns mischievous children in it on Christmas. Wow! A kitchen sink and a trash bin beneath it. The cabinets are full of glass bottles. They smell of lavender soap. Acquired mag food. Today's special meal is made of failed expectations and a lost hope for humanity. Delicious. Mag cat purrs with enjoyment. That's a good cat. Alas, there isn't anything particularly edible in the fridge. Wow, that sucks. Morning. In high spirits like usual. Good morning, Bennett. Mind expl... <laughs> Mind explaining why my bathtub is filled with acid? Just asking. Bennett, he flees the scene. Should we chase after him? Nah, let's leave the scolding to Aiden. A neat freak's fury can even drag Bennett out of extreme procrastination. Finally, I can save. Left. To the basement. Right. To school. Well, first... Library. Mom bought plants to liven up the room, but hardly anyone looks after them. Oh, dear. Some papers are lying on the table. Take a peek. Sure. It's Huxley's handwriting. An essay regarding the educational program translated to human speak. I find the socialization system rather pointless, thus unnecessary for an individual. I sincerely believe that it is up to the student whether to socialize or not. With our reanimation technology, we can bring back to life both the dead and hollow people alike. Even if they don't express sentient behavior afterwards. Hmm. Huxley moved most of his books to the basement. Now it's mostly magazines on this shelf. 
education program information booklet. Read, sure. Tip one, socialize every day. Socialization is a core element of the education program. Tip two, report any suspicious activity on school grounds. Tip three, don't feed stray animals on school grounds. Stay safe and ensure the safety of your fellow students. Anarchist Cookbook now with more recipes. Kaboom! Advanced Chemistry for Explosives Enthusiasts. And so... If I leave, crash into your car, I kissed your cat. Indecent. Web browser history. Mother shelf is growing bigger, isn't it? Mm hmm. Never trust a salesman. Cold hearted janitor. Alpha physicist. I didn't know it was possible, but somehow these romance book titles have changed for the worse. The year I had a pay rise. Embrace the overtimer in you. Wow, that's not great. This phone's been broken for a while. Well, okay, we're going to save again. I think I can get a bad ending by putting soap in an Omni Cube. So, might as well, right? Omni cube, Omni cube. Do it. Guard system shutting down. Guard systems shutting down. Initializing self destruction. The next moment I know I'm being devoured by lumps of meat. And I think to myself, it all started with a bottle of soap. Bad end, do not put soap in the Omni cubes. <laughs> that was weird. All right, no death this time. Listen. You'll be late to school. Also, take these. Use them after socializing or you'll die on the spot. Anxiety pills. Really? You know, you know, you know, that's fine. Felix got this plant for his birthday. He seems to like it more than any being in existence. It's called Venus Flytrap. Venus, for short. Chemicals are bubbling inside the flasks. Goodbye, Felix. Felix doesn't... <laughs> Felix doesn't look like he's up for a chat anymore. You know, I get it. Mm-hmm. Access denied. Doors with a puppeteer symbol can only open to those with an X in their names, Seth. But Huxley reprogrammed this one to let his crew workers through. So Florence or the others might be here. Good morning, Aiden. Good morning to you as well, dear girl. I hope you haven't forgotten that we have a piano lesson this evening. Of course not. It would be a pity if you missed your practice. I'll be waiting for you in the piano room. The dresses are in perfectly symmetrical position on both sides. Yes, they are. Piano room. We'll come back here later. 
I don't think I can go in here, but... Violent... Violent room? Uh, okay. It's violent, I guess. Anywho. Mm -hmm -hmm. Dissection room. Delightful. This specimen looks like living bowels with eyes. I briefly wonder if it has a vertebrae inside. Immediately stopped uh, doing her narration in her voice. The name's Goodwin. This one has been operated on for a few weeks. Poor thing. Wait, good one. Again? Baldwin, okay. It's still breathing. Well. Warning. Mutant spiders inside. Reads the label. Mm hmm The badge on his suit reads Lector. Inside are a bunch of detached limbs. What are you doing in here? Archibald. Cool. Everything I know about humans I learned from my lawnmower. Humans are nothing like lawnmowers as far as I'm aware. Still sleepwalking after 35 years. A passion for scalpels. Triple zero one. The fog. Read. Sure. Back in the days, I used to be at the top of my class. I loved being right. Answering correctly. I loved doing things better than everyone else. Mother always said that I inherited my hard-working mindset from my father. I was happy. I wasn't... Is that a code? I guess it doesn't hurt to type it down. Fragment deleted. It's just that my classmates decided that... Fragment deleted. Fragment deleted. Fragment deleted. Then one day the fog appeared. With each passing day I found my head becoming filled with it until I couldn't think clearly anymore. I've become clumsy, absent-minded, indecisive. Everything I didn't used to be. I Assume hate myself for it. One day I realized that the fog wasn't just in my head anymore. It was all around me, surrounding me, consuming me, shielding me. Huxley is operating on a patient. He's bringing the bone pieces together with super glue. Dr. Huxley. How are you, little Charlotte? Oh, come to think of it, you're not so little anymore. To think. You know, I'm going to resize my window just a little. So that uh, it's a nicer size for all of you. Because I realized it was still a little blown out. It is still, but I'm not going to make it as small as the actual game window. To think human children grow so fast. Felix hasn't grown an inch in these years, but look at you. <laughs> Some things just don't change, do they? <laughs> Dr. Huxley? Yes. How is... How is he doing? Ah, uh, Felix. 
Haven't you seen him upstairs? I thought you two got along rather well. Since my health started getting worse, we haven't spoken much. It's as if he's avoiding me. Ah, uh, sorry, I was thinking out loud. It's okay, come for advice whenever you feel like it. Ah, uh, no, whenever would be a bad idea, as I am a busy man. Uh, hmm, how about making an appointment in advance, then? Thank you, Dr. Huxley. I appreciate the sentiment, but you really don't have to. I sincerely hope you two make up. Especially since my cute nephew hasn't got anyone his age to talk to. Just like Bennett. Ah, uh, am I talking too much? You should hurry to school. Here, have a sticker. Acquired a sticker. Hmm. How to make friends in your spare time now comes with an extra booklet and how to get rid of them. <laughs> You know, sometimes, that is just the way, isn't it? Reusing old corpse pouches. Nasty. Eating, l <laughs> Eating light bulbs is wrong. Introducing cannibalism. Hum. It's a surprisingly clean table. All right. Also, I noticed that there's a red light up here. I assume it's supposed to be a camera. I was like, is it not there? Is it my uh, screen? No, nah, it's there. We still haven't greeted everyone yet. Wouldn't it be rude to leave like this? Hmm. Hey, who haven't I greeted? What word of you'll be late do you not understand? There's a door that won't open for me. There's no X in Charlotte. <sighs> Could have asked Huxley for it. He's busy. I'm busy too. Ah... Fine, lead the way. Yay! Felix has joined the party. Yay! All right. Hi, Florence. Oh, right on time. Can you hold some of this useless junk for me? I think I stole too many light bulbs, so Dr. Huxley might start suspecting me. Ah, sure, I can help. <laughs> Here you go. Pepper spray, pepper spray, and more pepper spray. Well, I guess we're gonna take the pepper spray. <laughs> I hope we don't need it, but knowing these games, we probably will. Acquired Pepper Spray This is very clearly a morgue. Can I return to work now? Sure. Thank you. Okay. School time. That's not something I expected to say. Now then. Onwards to school, Seth. Yes, ma'am. Shh, no disturbing the neighbors. The door we need is the last one. All right, all right. If I must. Hello. No open doors today. Rude. I'll leave this one to you, Seth. Riddles are your credo, aren't they? Yeah, this isn't really a riddle.
Remember, kids, elevators love stickers. I take out the sticker and place it on my bag. What a nice sticker you have here. Where are we going, dear friend? I don't know. Second floor? Got it, buddy. Wow. This is a very surreal game. I mean, the first one was too, but still. <laughs> Let's beat some sense into this freak. A few punches will make him respect the elders, huh? Ugh, this looks bad. Can't we help somehow, Seth? It's da it looks dangerous. So we'll just leave? Um, I'll look into it. If only we had something to use. Like pepper spray! <laughs> yeah, we, we have something. Right. We have pepper spray with us. <laughs> so who's filthy now? Feel like apologizing yet? I have nothing to apologize for. Is that so? Why don't we cut out that tongue of his if he has nothing to say? Wouldn't it be too cruel to ruin such a pretty face? Then why don't we do something more fun? As I take a step closer, one of the students notices me. And who are you? Um, I'm sorry to interrupt, but... Psh! <laughs> Hell yeah! Haven't your parents taught you? Violence is no good. Uh, my eyes! Get it off! Run! Quick! I reach... Ooh, I reach out for the boy's wrist. He slaps it away. Ah, uh, I didn't mean to. Later about that. Run! We fall to school. Take a leap down, okay. Phew. Got away. I like how we fall into a ball pit. <sighs> Are you okay? This body is too fragile. Throat hurts. The boy pants heavily, barely standing. He's completely out of breath. Seems like P.E. is not your best subject. You're so small. How did you distract them? All thanks to pepper spray. I waved the thumb-sized bottle before his eyes. He barely looks up. Florence says box cutters and pipes are fine and all, but they're not as effective in a big fight. I see. What did you do to them anyway? As I have said, nothing. They're contaminated. I only commented on that. So that's what all the filth deal was about. More importantly, wouldn't these people target you? Why would they? Eh? There's nothing to worry about. Everybody at school loves me. Moreover, I'll always have Seth on my side. What's important right now is that I helped a fellow schoolmate. Schoolmate? It's our school's uniform you're wearing, aren't you? I have a feeling maybe he's possessing a body? Is it? 
Now, now, let's hurry. Got it, got it. Sorry, Seth gets grumpy when we're late to class. I can show you the way to the infirmary. New task, find infirmary. Find class. Oh, I'm so blessed to catch a glimpse of our princess this morning. Garden? Seth, we need to take him to the infirmary. Shh, someone might hear. The poster says no pets allowed, but you know, I've seen stray mad cats in the garden. Psst, Seth. Why don't we check out if that's true later? Yes, later. Go to the principal room. Sure. Intruder detected. Initiating evaporation process. Oh, I haven't saved. Bad end. No entry. Uh, I'll be back. <laughs> All right, to the infirmary properly. Initiating socialization with studying student. We have battles now. Wow, this is weird. Ooh, I see. Socialization successful. Umbrella boy obtained. It was weird. A wonderful day, isn't it? Right, is this the infirmary? Infirmary. Here it is. The nurse here is kind, so don't worry. I see. Thank you. The boy disappears behind the door. Go to the second floor? Yeah. I assume. I don't remember this place. My class should be among these doors. Class A1. Class A2. I see. I'm sorry, I'm a bit lost here. Have you seen class A1 somewhere here? Why yes, the very first door leads to A1. But you can't get there without a pass. Then where can I get it? My friend from D3 had one. Go ask him. Sure. Can't do much in here it seems. Okay. So I assume I'm gonna have to be checking things. Okay, a lesson in progress. Uh, D3, okay. I assume it's you. Let me tell you a secret. If you open the very first door with white door pass, it'll get you to A1. Is that it? I just blew him up. I didn't read what that said. The student continues to browse the web on his phone despite losing his head. Oh my god. I've killed him. <laughs> or not. Pass to A1. I don't have one. in isolation until summer Cl access denied oh no organ harvesting in progress access denied a pass i'm so sorry i already gave it to the girl from f4 you definitely should you definitely should go there 
Okay, okay. I guess our princess is in another castle. There's no D in your name, access denied. They're right, there isn't. <coughs> the student's head explodes into a million pieces. His brains are scattered all over the floor. There weren't much brains to begin with. I assume it was similar for the other boy that I exploded. All right, F4. No entry for lunatics, that's mean. <coughs> the student's head explodes into a million pieces. No one seems to notice that his head exploded. Can they please stop exploding? <coughs> Toxic level above normal. <coughs> Shroom soup in preparation. Hmm. Okay. Why didn't you come sooner? I've already lost my pass in a bet. Why don't you go to C2 and beg for it? Oh boy. We love fetch quests. Infested, w <laughs> infested with head crabs. Like the ones from Half-Life? Gordon Freeman. In this class, we appreciate Crocs. The shoes? Okay. Air 404. <laughs> Alright, C2. You want a pass. If you take my trash, I'll give it to you. Accept the offer. Yes. Yes. Here you go. Acquired trash. What else do you need? I gave you the pass already. Did, did you? Did you? Gone with the wind. Access denied. Only for cool kids. We're cool. You phone and deaf book users only. Okay. I see. Class A1. I searched the plastic bag. Found white door pass. I used the white door pass. Finally. My head is spinning after all this running. I go to my place. Someone taps my shoulder. Psst! Henry! What took you so long? I thought we were gonna check homework before class. My bad, I ran into some trouble on my way here. Oh, really? Wiltshire, Warhol, no talking in class, please. Henry loudly clicks her tongue. We're so, so sorry, teacher. You apologize too. I'm sorry. All right. Attention everyone, we have a new student in our class. Please introduce yourself. Hello. There's no name that can define me, but you can refer to me as C. I am, <laughs> I am the god of this world. The class explodes with laughter. Do not be afraid. I won't be staying here for long. Take your seat. Mr. Wordsworth. The class starts. I try to focus on the teacher's speech. Ahem. Today our topic is the trial and soul cubes. As you all know, since you've turned 15, you're now able to see your soul cubes. 
soul cube store your soul data as the name implies it's speculated that soul cubes are just smaller omni cubes which raised a controversy among our scientists if soul cubes are omni cubes then aren't we just meat armor they control yes I'm sure you have heard this kind of news. Just like any data storage, soul cubes can become corrupted. That's where the trial comes in. The trials exist for helping the defective. Their cubes will be reformatted and debugged. Our school is proud to certify that it's usually one person a year, but sometimes it's two. As you all know, the 75th trial will be held quite soon, which all of you will attend for the first time. Who can explain the purpose of the trial? It's for correcting the defective. Right. The trial exists for the sole purpose of providing help to our students. By the way, there is music. It's just really really quiet a public vote among students and teachers alike will be held to determine a defective student among us tell me who has a defective cube anybody remember it's someone who will amount to nothing if not provided help now class how do we avoid cube corruption we go to school we abide by the rules we socialize. Very good. Now let's proceed with the lesson. It's lunch break. I look at Anri. We always eat together after all. She looks like she's about to cry. Did something happen? Oh no. I forgot my wallet. Even though I wanted to buy us a meal today, I'm, I'm so worthless. I'm getting bad vibes from her, like I feel like she is using Charlotte. Don't say that. I'll buy us something. Really? You'll do that for someone like me? You're not at fault, Anri. It happens to everyone. Yay, I'll be waiting on the rooftop. Yup, see you later. Let's go, Seth. Let's buy some apples and activate the warp point while we're at it, shall we? Only apples? I don't really feel like eating much today, sorry. Actually, I feel like I could throw up at any moment. New task to the canteen. New task activate to warp point and where's our new student did he also leave are your friends doing well oh. my god that was horrifying warp point activated the trial will right all your wrongs Although you're already an angel. Nice dress, Wiltshire. Thanks. Did you see that god imposter? I think he needs help. Does he <laughs> Student amalgamate! Third floor. We have a save point anywhere. I support you in anything you do. Good luck. I wish I was as cute as you are. Am I worthy of talking to you? Yes. There must be some kind of misunderstanding, Seth. They locked us in the bathroom. No one would purposefully lock us in. Oh, 
Well, okay. That's our book of truth. The door finally opens. I can hear footsteps of someone running away. It was messed up. Washing internal organs in the sink is strictly prohibited. I should hope so. That sounds unsanitary. What the heck? All right. I think I have to go to the canteen. I don't think any of these are. It's the library. A lovely girl is talking to me on a lovely day. I'm so happy. How I became successful by procrastinating. Quantum physics and pictures. How to peel an apple without hurting yourself. Unconventional ways to use internal organs. 99 reasons you shouldn't leave home after school. Hmm. Mathematics. Okie dokie. Library catalog. Why you should say no to learning by heart. Get a job by playing apps. One reason you should stay outside after school. How to treat canteen food poisoning. Delicious worm soup recipes. Mmm, delicious. All right. Ah, here we go. You're the main character here. Better sit with someone more important than me. Our god is over there sitting all alone, poor thing. A goddess shouldn't sit with commoners like us. The new boy looks so lonely. Maybe he needs a friend like you, for example. Sorry, the place beside me is taken. I'm pretty sure everyone wants to sit with you. Sorry, this place is taken. Find another one. I'm pretty sure everyone... Hmm. I can't believe you don't have an F-Book account. Everyone wants to be friends with you. I feel weird about this. Who would have thought our god is so tiny? Enjoy your soup. I will. Thank you. I wonder who will be chosen for the trial this year. Sorry, I'm waiting for a friend to come. It's okay. I want to do something that'd make me special, but ended up procrastinating again. My imaginary friend is already sitting here. Please find another place. I have a feeling people don't like us as much as they claim. I'm not worthy of talking to you, princess. I wish I had a haircut like yours. It's cold by the window. You'll catch a cold if you sit here. Do you feel bad that sitting that C is sitting there all alone? You should go join him. I don't like this. It's weird. I'm certain I saw your photos at on a cat lover site. Who would have thought? You're cute. You look so pretty today. The meal today is especially delicious, isn't it? I don't know. Oops, I think I'm glued to this seat. Okay, fine. C is poking at the canteen food. It's poking back. Um, hi again. Oh, hello. Mind if I join you? No, not at all. Anri's waiting for me, but talking for a moment wouldn't hurt, right? You seem a bit better. Yes, it could have been worse if it wasn't for your intervention. The nurse patched me up a little. She said I'll recover soon. Although I still appear to be having trouble with verbal communication. I see. Is it true? That you are the god of this world? Ah, no wonder you're curious. 
That is the only thing I am sure of since my awakening in this form. In fact, I tried to get rid of this vessel immediately. But who would have known that a human's preservation instinct was this strong? I couldn't put a scratch on myself. I was afraid of the pain. Curious, right? Not only that, I do not know the reason why I am here. Needless to say, it is not only a great inconvenience, but also a waste of time. I want to get rid of this body as soon as possible, but there is surveillance everywhere. Kind of ironic. Kind of ironic that the rules forbid self-harm but not violence, right? Sorry, I accidentally kind of skipped over that. That's why I'm looking for the way out. Say, do you wish to aid me? When I return to my heavenly domain, I'll definitely... Look! She's about to jump! What? Really? That Eiler? Eh? Everyone's gathering by the windows. Somebody gasps. Unknowingly, I find myself running outside. What's with the commotion? I can't see. I know her. It's our class representative, Scarlett Eiler, an all-A student and a student council member. An athlete and unrivaled beauty who always gets what she wants. An ideal person. We never really spoke, but she was always the one to establish discipline in our class. Now that I think of it, Scarlett Eiler was a scary person. Unapproachable and reserved, she gave off an air of intimidation by her very presence. Why would such a strong person give up on her very life? Now I'll never know. Artificial sun shone upon the school, the students and the ambulance workers who arrived. Oh, I see. I kind of said that weird because I misread the grammatical spacing. Scarlet Eiler was no longer in this world. Oh boy, that was, um, distressing. There's no need to go out for now. You are so right, Charlotte. Hello. Hi, Aiden. So you didn't forget about our piano lesson. How could I? Good. Well then, come join me. We shall play a, a prelude to events about to unfold. Hmm. Children's album. This one is my favorite. It's pretty easy to learn, too. Game sheet music for piano. Felix and Bennett bought this one for Christmas. There are plenty of movie scores, too. Shoujo manga. <laughs> Shoujo manga anthology. This one's not mine. I think I just saw something I shouldn't have. I mean, it's just shoujo. Let's put it back where it was, Seth. Soap and skin music music sheet. It's not that I like it because there's soap in the band title, Bennett once said. The ones he asked me to learn were Spiracle and Turbine Womb. Tur turbine Womb? What? Horrifying. 
there's a My Chemical Romance full discography among the classical music plates. Amazing. Jazz for your fingernails. Okay. My fingernails do like jazz. Toi, noisens. So that these servants can, with all their voice, sing of your wonderful feats. Clean the blemish of our spotted lips, O St. John. I join Aiden at the seat. We play a prelude. So cute! Thank you for spending time with me, Aiden. It's my pleasure. Oh, you two are bonding? Now carefully cut through the membrane. Ah, oh, hello there. Shoo, shoo. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Come on in. Since I've tutored Felix and Bennett on first aid, they've taken an interest in unidentified life-form dissection practice. Isn't it wonderful? Bennett refused to use anything but the chainsaw to cut through the specimen, so I had to kindly refuse his offer to participate in the class. Well, I understand. Felix is deeply focused. He always takes things he does seriously. Mag Cat is resting on Bennett's lap. Meow. Shh. Bennett is sleeping. Join in? Yeah. I sit on the sofa for a while, listening to static noise. I'm exhausted. Let's have a little nap, shall we? Understanding maggots. Eden, the God Delusion, the Joyous Wisdom. Clothes, hairpins, microchips, cockroaches. One of these items is not like the others. I don't know why she has microchips in there either. True Realm Research. I exhaustedly covered myself with blankets. Falling asleep as my head hits the pillow. Oh, a dream. Are you alright? Well, I cannot understand that, but yes. To die, to sleep, to sleep, to sleep, to sleep. Perchance to dream, I, the pangs of time, the rub. For in the pale cast of troubles, and arrows of outrageous fortune. Hmm. Ahem. Hello there. Apologies for that little speech test. Your language is a bit tricky. But I'm a fast learner. You... Don't look so surprised. It's simply the form your mind gave us. Seems like, despite your initial bravado, you're subconsciously afraid of us. So we took a more masculine form, although the concept of gender does not apply to us. Feel free to refer to us as Frey from now on if you feel like it. After all, our appearance right now is one of a male Pythia. Oh. 
Am I dreaming? Technically, you are. However, the fact that we'll meet the next time you go to sleep and the next time after that remains. I slumber by day and wake up by night. I? Wasn't it us just a moment ago? Isn't it easier for you to talk to me this way? Yes, I suppose so. You look sullen. A girl from my class committed suicide. A pity. Were you friends? We weren't. Acquaintances? Not really. A complete stranger, then. Should it matter? Don't put it like that. We're classmates. You are sorrowful now that she's gone, but you couldn't care less during her lifetime. Have you ever had a conversation? No, I just... She was so unapproachable, an ideal person. What can a miserable person like me talk about with someone this perfect? Thinking that you gave up completely. That's the same as being indifferent. No, it's not like that. You're exaggerating things. Only so that you would be honest with yourself. Wouldn't anyone be sad if someone died? I'm afraid I cannot understand that. If that person wasn't important to you up until this moment, why do you feel down? No, even worse, you feel obligated to feel sad. Deep inside, you know you have no reason to be. Why not be true to yourself? Is human empathy such a foreign concept to you? Empathy, huh? You humans have a rather twisted understanding of it. If the death of some specimen you weren't involved with bothers you, then why not bawl your eyes out whenever you see a piece of meat on your plate? That animal must have suffered a lot more than some misunderstood teenage girl just to make your supper delicious. No. It's not the same, you'll say. I didn't. But in the end, it is. You're all animals, yet your kind puts yourself above all. Oh my, what a plot twist. Who would have known that the concept of empathy applies only to your fellow humans? Ah, it never truly ceases to amaze me how you humans love to make a mountain out of a molehill. You'd never understand. How can you know the sadness of losing someone if you and Pythias were all connected? And united you stayed even when somebody died. For us, when somebody dies, the connection is lost forever. Hmm, do you really think it was always this way? That all Pythias willingly gave up their very egos for the sake of becoming one with everybody? Frey laughs. It echoes throughout the mind space. Stay in the fog if you wish to. Isn't it safer like that? Although I would love to converse more, it looks like it's time for you to open your eyes. Who can it be? Who can it be at this hour? Who can it be now? I'm coming, hold your horses. Wrong room.
Open the door. Yes. <laughs> uh, did you get another body? Wise choice. Good evening. No, it can't be. Since when did you start to use doors, Umbrella Man? I figured it would be nice to be polite once in a while. Especially since I'm using this vessel. Let's have some tea, shall we? Uh, sure. Come in. Now, now. What's with the suspicious look? I've merely come for a friendly chat. You see, I've received no orders from my employer recently, so I took this chance to have a small vacation. So you're slacking off. Oh my god, that little tear. We hurt his feelings, didn't we? Don't put it in such an unsightly way. Believe me, even a workaholic like me can't let this opportunity pass by. After all, such a chance comes once in eternity. Umbrella Man chuckles at his own words. Wonderful, isn't it? I suppose it is. You always seem so busy. And believe me, I truly am. But enough about me. How's school? Well, I helped a classmate today. Oh, you needn't have. Why so? I'll spare you the details. But there's something I know for a fact. That boy was destined to die in that alleyway. That's just cruel. He is a good person. He doesn't deserve it. It's not about deserving, my dear. It's just that his sole existence threatens this world. I'd put it that way. As long as he exists, this route is doomed for a bad ending. No matter what you or your beloved puppeteer do. There is music here, by the way. It is just very quiet. I hope I made myself clear. Anyhow, I'm glad to see you in high spirits despite your worsening condition. Is it that bad? It wouldn't be an exaggeration if I answered with a yes. The circles under your eyes have gotten darker, skin color more pale than ever. Have you been eating properly? I don't feel like it recently. My, my, you have a doctor living under one roof with you. Why don't you pay him a visit? Or are you afraid to admit your condition has been worsening even more? You're right, I really should. Yet, you haven't done so. I don't want to cause anyone more trouble. That was an accident. Ah, so that's the reason you're reluctant to take measures. I see, I see. Oh, youth. I used to be young, too, once. You know. <laughs> that sounds weird when you say it wearing a boy's face. Hush, this is merely a vessel, after all. Pay it no mind. Anyhow, friendly chat aside, recently the number of abnormalities in this dimension has been increasing. Screens and door locks malfunctioning, world expanding, people missing, a living hell. I said hell weird. Do you know anything in regards to that matter? 
have anything to tell me, perhaps? Well, the Oracle has... My, my, don't tell me the slumbering god has awoken. Might it be that your body has begun to collapse under the pressure of the Oracle's corpse rotting inside you? Well, I'm not giving him the right tone at all, judging by what she's saying. When you put it in such a light-hearted tone, I'm almost not worried of what'll eventually happen to me. Death is merely a release, my dear. Still, leaving this world might be too early for me, sir. Umbrella Man shrugs. Well, it is your choice, as it was your choice to stop taking the pills. I don't need those anymore. Right, right, you don't. Just keep it in mind that the Oracle is no longer the divine being you met three years ago. For it's not but the rotting corpse of a god. No longer sentient, nor self-aware, with your very mind giving it shape. A parasite of your mind. That's what my employer would say anyway. And look at the time. I'm afraid I must leave or your humble puppeteer will scold me for robbing you of sleep hours. Right. Mr. Seth? Yes? <laughs> See you, Umbrella Man. Stay well. Umbrella Man leaves. I guess we have to get back to bed, huh? Fascinating that everyone's actually gone during the night. I assume that the developer knew that if you explored, there should be people gone to bed. Probably. To bed with you, young lady. I fall asleep the moment my head hits the pillow. Oh, again? Welcome back, Miss Wiltshire. Sorry, I don't feel like talking. Is that so? Well, then I won't burden you with conversations. Instead, how about a bedtime story? Ah, and don't stand so far away. Come sit beside me. Sorry, I'm not very comfortable around you. Is that so? Well, there's no helping it. It's all a dream, remember? So make yourself at home. I reluctantly sit beside Frey. Now back to the story. Do you know the tale of Ink and Paper Princess? Yep. In our land, during the pre oracle era, it was a part of a psychology test. It was made to be unfinished, and the one who read it had to write the ending themselves. It's surprising how much one can learn about another person just by having them write a few sentences. Want to listen to my own version? I don't have the other choice, do I? <laughs> so much for free will, right? Well then. A pitiful ink-black princess that looked for minds alike, who ended up in prison of paper kingdom. But the story didn't end here. Time passed and paper princess herself came to visit the prisoner. The two became acquaintances shortly after, and Ink Princess was freed from imprisonment. Ink Princess taught Paper Princess writing, 
and no paper in the city was blank anymore. They obtained power known as knowledge. Paper Princess couldn't have been happier. Yet, having spent so much time with Ink Princess, she became stained with Ink Princess's pitch black color. Day by day, Paper Princess became more and more soaked in jet black ink, until she was indistinguishable from the Ink Princess herself. That would be the end of the story. She fell asleep, huh? By the way, hello there, Mr. Seth. Is that how Miss Wiltshire calls you? <laughs> what a joke. You must be thinking that you're in control. What are you even here for, I wonder? You aren't even supposed to exist in this world. Ah, oh, I know. You must be looking for answers. But I'm afraid you won't be getting any. Because, you see, Miss Wiltshire is an, is an unreliable narrator. <laughs> I won't lie, I, I already realized she's probably an unreliable narrator, but I'm glad that they are breaking the fourth wall. It's getting worse. What time is it? Oh no. Anne hates when I'm late. Hurry! Use the Warp Omni Cube. Are you sure? Of course, silly. Skipping school is against the rules. You should know better than anyone. Today we will get up, go to school, and go back to sleep. Remember? Can I get you to save at least? No time for walking around, Seth. Whoa. Okay. Yes, warp to school. Henry! Henry doesn't even turn her head in my direction. Um, Miss Warhol? I lightly tap her shoulder. Henry finally turns around. She's on the verge of tears. Charlotte Wiltshire. Yes? Why didn't you come eat lunch with me yesterday? I waited and waited and waited. Until everyone left, until the bell rang. But you never came. Henry begins tearing up again. I'm sorry. I guess I wasn't quite myself yesterday. I went home straight after that happened, you know? Henry locks me in a hug, hiding her face in my sweater. Her hold is so strong I can barely breathe. I thought you didn't want to spend time with me anymore. I thought you hated me. I thought... I thought... I pat Henry's head. There's no way that could happen, right? Friends don't abandon each other. Yet you did the opposite, you liar. Please forgive me. I won't do that anymore. Do you promise? I promise. You have to swallow a thousand needles if you break it. Looks like everyone says the same stuff. Our god is a loser. Leave him alone. Huh? The student blushes, turning away. You look pretty today. Are your friends doing well? Class today was so fun. Socialization successful. Let's start our class. Today's topic is the world. The house is the world. The house has 11 floors in total. 
with its structural elements changing their location on a monthly basis. All transportation in the house is carried through using elevators and warp technology. The food in the house is generated by Omnicubes. The waste is disposed of by Omnicubes. The materials necessary for production are generated by Omnicubes. Okay. <coughs> Not again. Are you okay, Miss Wiltshire? I'm all right. I just need to use the bathroom. You may go. Uh, hey. I vomit into the sink. It becomes black from the ink. I notice C standing by the sink nearby. My head must have been spinning so much that I didn't notice him. C washes his hands and face again and again, frantically pressing the soap dispenser button over and over. I carefully place a hand on his shoulder. It stiffens at the touch. Stop it. You'll get blisters on your hands. I can't. I've washed off most of the soup, but I still feel dirtied. Soup? My fellow student smashed my head into a worm soup. Oh. It must have felt horrible. Yes. In fact, everything I touch feels contaminated. I just can't shake off the feeling of disgust. I see. Suddenly conscious of myself, I remove my hand from C's shoulder. How about you? You don't look well. I've known better days, I have to admit. But I'll manage. Seth is there for me. Is that so? Oh, the lesson has ended. I left my bag there. See you later. I wave to C. He waves back with a little uncertainty, as if testing the new gesture. Hmm. That's fourth dimensional perception for you. Everyone's a pyramid. A painting by a famous artist. Let's not disturb anyone. Oh, okay, they're all actually people. Where's Anri? My bag's gone. What is it, Miss Wiltshire? Um, I'm very sorry, I can't find my belongings. The class laughs. Maybe someone accidentally took it. Excuse me, I'll go look for it. Teacher, can I go too? Why would you, Miss Warhol? Because I wish to help. Two heads are better than one. Okay, you can go. Henry runs to me with a happy grin. I'll help, Charlie. Thank you, Henry. I appreciate it. Look for the bag. Who even makes you these dresses? I feel like we're being bullied. But everyone's too afraid to say so. Holy crap, Henry had a skill that was called blackmail and it just destroyed the bullies. Self-insert obtained. Hmm. <laughs> oh my 
my god. Her self-insert dismembers people, I guess. Armory? What about the garden? Charlie, are these yours? I don't know. All the pencils and pens are covered in mud. Look, it's yours too, right? This textbook cost a lot. There's another textbook. I wonder who did this. Ah, oh, and I liked this notebook. The pages are completely soaked. Maybe there was some kind of misunderstanding. There's no way that it is. I bet it was Anri. Bet you anything. Anri picks up another notebook. Did I do something wrong? Even the pages of my book of truth are torn out. Even though I worked so hard on keeping it tidy. Those bastards, how could they do this to you? I think it's some kind of mistake. There's no way it is. Like I said, it's okay. Unforgivable, unforgivable, unforgivable. Enough of this. I'll report it to the teacher. Henry leaves before I could protest any further. Looks like we've found everything. I don't feel like going to class anymore. Let's go home, Seth. I'm home. Took you long enough. Hey, what happened? Is something wrong? You're covered in blood. Don't worry, it must be mine. That's exactly what I'm worried about, stupid. You need to see Huxley. Now. It's nothing important, really. Uncle's rule, no objections from the sick. Felix clumsily drags me to the basement stairs, tugging me by the sleeve. What were you doing, even? I talked to God today. Oh no, this looks worse than I thought. Might as well check your brain function, too. Hmm, should I start with the good or bad news? Just kidding, I was planning to tell you the good news first anyway. Well, good news is that I know what this is. The bad news is that it's nearly incurable. I see. So, what exactly are these, uncle? Hmm, heart wounds, as I like to call them. This kind of disease is quite common for those in their adolescent period, just like you are now. When you're stressed, anxious, or hurt, or hurt by words and actions of others, these wounds inflicted upon you will manifest as scars on your body, mostly on your arms, to be more specific. It's not lethal, but it'll cause you some minor inconveniences. The good side to this disease is that although your body will become vulnerable, your mind will receive less damage. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> I suppose so. There's nothing to laugh about. Now, now, don't be so harsh. Can't you see our little miss already has weak immunity to her environment? Whatever. I'm getting back to work. Do forgive him. No, I, I'm not angry. It's just that I don't understand why he is. 
He must be worried about you, am I wrong? He shouldn't be, I don't deserve that. He must be thinking otherwise. Take care, little one, will you? Worry not, Seth will make sure of it. <laughs> I'm sure he will. Good night, Dr. Huxley. Sorry for troubling you at this hour. It's nothing. Remember my clinic's motto? Healthy people are not welcome here. <laughs> so there, feel free to visit when you're sick. For now, I'll get back to work. Your social stamina has increased. New task, go to sleep. The heck is that? I turned it down because I noticed it was very loud. A hideous smell is coming from the kitchen, of course. I tried the door handle. It's locked. Is anybody in here? Dear girl, I don't think it's a good time to enter right now. Aiden, is that you? What happened? Mr. Be <laughs> Mr. Bennett has decided to take up cooking. And right now, his cooking is destroying everything in sight. Ah... I see. I won't hinder you. Of course. That sound is hideous. You know what? I'm going to go down to the basement. Whew. Oh my god, that sound was wretched. And no one is here. Okay. So I guess we must go to bed. Back to that horrible sound. I don't think we can do anything else, so... Alright, to bed. Good night, Seth. Rise and shine. Frey waltzes around the room. As you can see, I've done some rearrangements in this place. Hasn't it become lovely? I'll do something about the fog, too. Also, I've brought you clothes. Put your hands up, and voila! Now we're one of a kind. Frey? Yes? What are all these books doing here? Let's call it a mind library. You see, memories are stories from the past that we retell to ourselves. Once they're gone, you're no longer the person you used to be. But I'm drifting away from the point. Stories are meant to be kept in books, right? Many books make a library. There you can find every memory, every feeling, every action you've done or considered doing. All possibilities are written down right here. Some stories are better off being forgotten, however. I've selected a variety of especially interesting memory journals for you. Feel free to read them if you feel like it. Even if your memory is still fresh, I believe your puppeteer will be delighted to know more about the people you've associated with. I sure would. Frey is reading a book, humming something under his nose. How I Met Aiden. Read. Yes. I was nine. It was during Christmas when I hid under the sofa in order to catch Santa Claus with a rope and a bottle of chloroform. What the heck? Why? The one who came through the fireplace wasn't St. Nicholas, but a horned creature instead. 
Come out, mischievous one, I can see you, he called. Unwillingly, I had to comply, hiding the chloroform behind my back. You're not Santa Claus, I declared, a bit disappointed. I am widely known as the name of Krampus, the beast answered, proud of himself. So Santa won't come, I sighed, sulking even more. Santa Claus brings gifts to good children only. I come to punish those who misbehaved, the beast continued. But I'm a good girl, I declared confidently. And may I ask why you feel this way? Mom says so. Even though she barely sees you, how can she make that statement? Mom's always right. She also says not to talk to strangers, I added, pouting. In a swift movement, I brought a... <laughs> I brought a chloroform-soaked towel to the creature's face. Seconds later, he was sprawled out on the floor, motionless. Ah, oh, yes, you were such a good child. It's a pity you're not Santa Claus, I exclaimed, hovering over him. Slowly, I dragged the body down the stairs to the basement. What's the commotion about? Two figures peeked out of the dissection room's door frame. It was Bennett and a co-worker of his, Lawrence. You, you brought friends. Why didn't you say so earlier? Ever since he found a new bright yellow hazmat suit and was no longer called B-12, Bennett was constantly in a great mood. There were barely any signs of the moody person he used to be. Mind helping me a bit? I smiled. Sweating. Sure, what do you want to do with this dissecting, researching, eating, perhaps? Bennett asked mischievously. No, no, I want to become friends. How do you plan to do that? Lawrence gave me a worried look. I looked at the ceiling as if the answers were there. Make him sign a contract? Maybe? Perhaps I was a mischievous child after all. Memory end. Wow, she's, she was a bad kid. How I met Bennett and Huxley. Read? Yes. I was eight. One of the days when I was home alone, they appeared out of nowhere at my doorstep. There was a small, rhythmic knocking at first. Knock. 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 Repeating over and over again. I knew I shouldn't open the door. Mother told me not to do so. No matter what. Good children don't disobey their parents. Knock, knock. When I was scared of the unknown, I crawled under the bed to hide beside the monsters beneath it. I felt safe among them. As time passed, the knocking got louder and louder and louder until I couldn't bear it anymore. I was adamant on staying under the bed until morning comes. Then I heard the door opening with a click sound. Someone came in. My room had no locks, so I ran to the bathroom. However, I was too slow. A figure in a hazmat suit covered my mouth. Another hand curled around me in an iron hold. Shh, the intruder whispered. Don't make a sound. 
Another figure had a mask on, the one plague doctors from horror movies would wear. He spoke like a doctor, in an understanding, polite voice. We are sorry to interrupt you, but I am afraid we have no place to go in this cold, and the other households we've turned to expressed quite an inadequate reaction to our humble plea for shelter. After being turned down so many times, we've figured we'd force our way in. You see, we're so very tired. Do you live alone? The person in the hazmat suit asked in a harsh tone, hissing at me. No, was my simple answer, in a voice hoarse from fear. I thought of Umbrella Man and his quiet presence in the room, and how good it would be if he appeared sooner. He was nothing like these violent strangers. Hmm, all right, are you good at keeping secrets, little one? The doctor asked. Hmm, the only option I had was to nod in approval. Great, Bennett dear, if you would be so kind, do release the child. She is no threat. You're too trusting, the other grumbled. Am I? <laughs> the taller person let out a loud laugh, sending shivers down my spine. You see, I am a doctor, he continued. Figures. However, my stay in this place is highly confidential, so I wouldn't like anyone on our tail. Please do respect that and keep our stay here a secret. If you don't, I'll kill your parents, Bennett said in a casual tone as if it wasn't a threat. Father doesn't come home these days, I replied, saddened by the fact. Sorry, just your mother then. <laughs> wow, that settles it, the doctor beamed. Now, now, little one, accompany us to the bathroom, for I am so awfully hungry I could eat a human. The bathroom? Why the bathroom? The smaller man elbowed him. Oh, sorry, sorry. That was a joke. A bad one. The doctor quickly backtracked. In the morning, I found the two peacefully sleeping in the bathtub, having eaten all of the soap and shampoo on the shelves. <laughs> oh my, oh, look at them, they're all cuddled. That's really odd, oddly cute in a way. The next day, they had settled in the basement, and a week later, I was doing all kinds of errands for their research. Collecting bugs, buying a year's supply of soap with the funds in my money jar, and helping to carry out bags with unknown contents on a daily basis. Of course, I made sure Mom never ever went to the basement at night. Umbrella Man appeared weeks later only to pat my forehead and reassure me that he'd keep an eye on them. Memory end. Ridiculous. A piano. Want to try it? Today I'll pass. Perhaps you'd like to join me in reading, Miss Wiltshire. Except... Frey chuckles. All right. I'm rereading an anthology of Greek myths. Have you read the story of Hades and Persephone? They say that Hades, the god of the underworld, captured the beautiful Persephone, the goddess of springtime. But I believe that it was Persephone who captured Hades, and his heart and mind belonged to none other than her since the moment they met. 
which was quite rare for a Greek god considering. Even though the pomegranate seeds Persephone ate urged her to return to the underworld for half a year, she was allowed to live on the surface for the rest of the time, just like you come back here only during the dream state. Or is this comparison too much of a stretch? I do tend to get carried away with words. Oh my, seems like someone has fallen asleep already. Sleep well, princess. <laughs> Day six? Hmm. <coughs> Are you all right? <coughs> it's nothing. Don't worry. I just need to wash my face. That's all. Today, too, we'll get up, go to school, and go back to sleep. New task. To the bathroom. Okie dokie. <laughs> Hi. Bennett. <gasps> oh my gosh. I didn't know he looked like that under the hazmat suit. He's so cute. Oh yeah. Oh, it's just you. Hi. It's rare seeing you without the mask. It's easier to blend in with the crowd in it, and safer, considering the environment I work in. Does your face still hurt? Does he have eyes in that burn? A bit. Not much. Not to the point of being unable to sleep anyway. Ever since Henry removed the eyes from my internal organs, I've been just fine. Wait, so those were your organs? Apparently these orbs don't like when soap gets into them. You need to use the sink, right? Ah, yes, I've been coughing up ink lately. Ink, huh? Maybe you should collect it. We can make a fortune on selling ballpoint pens. Alrighty, I have to run. Gotta finish my business in the violent room before game <laughs> before game of chairs starts. Bennett, seemingly satisfied with his financial proposal, leaves the bathroom. I wash my mouth and face until the ink stains become barely visible. Now that's better. Oh right. There's something I want to get before we go to school. Visit Felix. All right. Can I go save first? I can indeed. Hmm. What are you guys doing in here? Huxley and Aiden have a heated discussion about something involving particles and dark matter. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe I should go to the basement real quick. A do not disturb sign is hanging on the door. It's open. Enter. Yeah. Then it seems occupied. S Pester Bennett. Yes. I raise my voice. Bennett. Ah! Bennett suddenly turns around with the chainsaw still in his hands. <laughs> oh dear. Before, before I know it, my insides spill on the floor. Man, don't startle me like that. 
No one ever reads warning signs these days, do they? That end. Do not disturb. <laughs> well. <laughs> That's freaking funny. Alright, this time I won't go bother him. I uh, am kind of pleased that the gore that time was very, very cartoony. Felix! Good morning! I know that look. Do you need something? Well, yes. Do you have a spare pair of gloves? Oh, what for? A friend. Well, not a mutual friend, but an unrequited friend, rather. Don't tell me it's that god guy. Yes. He doesn't like germs, apparently. The god has mysophobia, huh? Why am I even surprised? Here you go. Acquired a pair of gloves. Thank you. Yes, yes. What a wonderfully helpful person I am. Now mind your business. See you later. Warp to school. Find C before class. Well, all right. Still can't go to the question mark floor. Okie dokie. Charlie! Henry? Henry practically throws herself at me. A wide smile is plastered on her face. Cute. Or it would be cute, but I don't trust Henry. I've missed you. Hey, hey, let's go feed the mad cats before class. The stray one, so the rumor was true? Yes, they're in the garden. Come on, let's go bu let's buy them food. Although I forgot my wallet. Again. It's okay, I can buy it. Really, what a relief. Let's go, let's go. All right, lead the way. Guess I'll have to find C later. Buy food and go to the garden. We're not going there. Ugh. Healthy food. Junk food. Oh, I barely have any money. It's okay, let's settle for the cheap stuff then. Oh my god, don't feed cats junk food. It's bad for them. <laughs> the mad cats nuzzle against my hands. No need for formalities, I'm just a mere human. I bring out the snacks we got. Today's special flavor is failure is failure and impending doom. Mad cats hastily with eagerness. Good cats. Let's visit them next time, too. Sure. Now then, let's go back and change for PE class, shall we? Ah, uh, sorry. There's something I have to do before the lessons start. But I'm here. What other business can you have? It won't take long, I promise. Is that so? Well then, go on. I won't wait for you. Hey, there you are. C puts down the book he was reading when he sees me. Hi there. Hello. Is he? Sort of. I'm gathering information on this world. My memories are incredibly out of order, which is a great inconvenience. But all I could find were illustrated manuals for express weight loss and lists of ways to become a billionaire by clicking pop-up ads. 
there's also a collection of must-read classics that nobody will ever read. It hardly helped with the organization of my mindscape, but it was an entertaining read anyway. Perhaps the school library isn't the place you should turn to. Yes, perhaps I should have taken the leaflets they were handing out on my way here. If you wanted knowledge on sales in supermarkets, then absolutely. Oh, why don't I give you my notes? I hastily bring out the Book of Truth from my bag. It's just my theories and observations, though. They're a bit silly. Here, you can have it. C reaches out only to stop midway. His breathing hitches. Uh, sorry. I can't accept it after all. Why so? Ah, it's because it's not clean, right? I'm really sorry. Don't worry about it. How about I tell you everything I know? Uh, that would be kind of you. Didn't we bring gloves? Then it's a promise. There's something I can give you in return. You don't have to, really. I want to. Here. Acquired notebook from C. I write stories, you see. Perhaps you'll find it interesting. You can throw it away after you read it. Don't worry, I'll keep it. Ah, I almost forgot. I brought you these. I hand the gloves to C. You said you didn't like touching things, did you? C looks dumbfounded for a moment. Are these for me? Do you see someone else here? No, it's just... Thank you. You really needn't have done so much for me. Don't say that. I'm happy to be of help to you. Sorry, I have to run. We have PE class today. See you, see. New task. To the changing room. Ooh, the changing room. My locker is the last one on the upper right. <gasps> Something's off here, Seth. Yeah, sure is. All right, fine. There is a locking sound in the distance. Oh, no. Don't tell me. It's really locked. It must be that the teacher accidentally locked me in. <laughs> the oddities push me to the ground. As they rip apart my body parts, I cough out a considerable amount of ink black matter. Just what is <coughs> this? I'm suffocating. Isn't there somebody? Ink kept flowing and flowing out of my mouth, completely flooding the room. In a moment, all went black. All right, so what I am going to do is leave this here. Um, I'll let you in on a little secret. I have actually recorded the entire game, and I now just realized that I don't have to save at the darn save point. Um, I'm kind of a ding dong. Anyhow, besides that, um, there is almost probably twice as much gameplay in this game as there was in the first one. So I'm going to be trying to split it about in half because um, while I can say that, you know, two or three hours is okay for a video, I think four is definitely beyond what most people would watch. So yeah, I'm going to be splitting it in half. So... If you made it this far, thank you all for watching, and I hope you liked this video. If you did like it, please hit that like button. And if you want to see more of me but you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. I upload videos, well at the moment I am uh, 
doing it only twice a week for a temporary schedule. It is going to be back to Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday at some point. But twice a week, you will get videos right now. And um, I'm going live sporadically at the moment. So if you want to see me live, just follow me on social media. Follow me on YouTube and Twitch. And I even have a Discord, which will be linked down below. And I hope to see you all next time. Bye.